We all didn't get paid. He took back our, all our money on PayPal. Now we have to fight PayPal for our money back. I drove four hours there and back. Patty ripped up the posters of her own. It was wonderful. <laughs> Amber, <laughs> Amber was fierce. I've never seen Amber in my life the way she got. And I fucking love it. If I ever get into a fight, Amber's on my side for sure. Yeah, it comes out of me sometimes. Turn your headphones. Check, check, one, two. Boosted, gone wild. Is that boosted shit? <laughs> your husband subscribed. <laughs> What up, what up? We are here with another episode of Boosted Gone Wild. We are here with Patty Kay and Miss Amber Fields. We have two guests today and we have a wild story for you. So this was an unplanned podcast. Patty was supposed to still be in New York, but we were all at this autograph signing yesterday and we all got scammed. So we all have to talk about it. We are livid. And here we are. Patty, Amber, what do you have to say? <laughs> Gosh, this is such a long story. Um, I think it all starts uh, when he hired me and a few models last month uh, for an event. It went well. Some models didn't get paid. They're throwing stuff. And uh, I don't know. One girl was even like <laughs> screaming in this convention. I don't know what happened with that. But... Um, Somebody else ended up paying us and it was fine, which is why I recommended uh, you guys come. And last week he was trying to cancel me and it was weird about money, like just how he always is. So I messaged you guys and I let you know, hey, like this is sketchy. Like, I don't know if we should do this. And um, yeah, so we came, obviously we went there and it was just a disaster. So it was such a disaster. So, um, what I've been told from, we were all in a group chat, be like, hey, like this guy is always asking for more than what you're agreed upon. So just make sure not to do it because, you know, that's just not fair. Um, and I was like, okay, I will definitely not do more than what I, what was agreed upon. Um, so I had an agreement with this guy to do it for $2,000 and then an extra $1,000 for a shoot, which I said I would include nude. Um, but when I came to the shoot, there were many more photographers that I did not agree to that we're going to take my photos. So I said, no, I'm not going to let three other photographers, two other photographers have my nude photos for them to use for God knows what. So I said, no, I'm not going to do the nude shoot, but I still continue to do four looks with this guy because I did agree to a shoot. Um, we were all like, this is like not even, this is so much extra than what we were supposed to be doing. Um, then he wanted us to do like more shoots upstairs. I don't do more than three looks on any photo shoot. And I, I made him aware of that. And anyway, so that was day one. And from day one, we were already getting like weird vibes. And then day, day two came, which is where we do the signing, where we get to meet our fans. From 12 to 2, we are only paid for two hours, keep in mind. <laughs> yep. So we showed up at 12. We started doing our job. Um, we were taking uh, cash for autographs and photo ops, which Jason, um, should I say? Yeah. 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 So Jason uh, was the person who was in charge of the event, was taking money from all of our fans for our photos and our autographs. And then also uh, separate photo ops that we were supposed to get paid for with the fans. Some were topless, some were not. Um, <laughs> which everything was fine until the very end when it was time to get fucking paid. So this is so this is the thing with him. He's always asking for more, like I told you guys. And in the past, it's every time it comes down to payment, there's always an issue. I've had to get down, I've had to talk to him about it multiple times. Like, why is there always an issue? Just pay what we agreed upon. And he's trying to get out of paying more. You know, I feel like yeah. he kind of lost on this event a little bit and his reaction instead of, uh, fulfilling his his side of the agreement yeah. was to just try to scam us because he probably gets away with this. Of course, especially when he's working with smaller models that don't have a voice or new into the industry aren't comfortable but with, with speaking up. And me and Boosted were under the impression that we're going to sign these photos for the fans, not to sign 300 photos so this Jason guy can sell it on the side and profit from all of our our photos our signatures we never agreed to any of that it was never written in any any contract or on Instagram we had no idea our jobs was to show up meet fans and sign photos for that for that fans during the two hours that was agreed upon 
So when after the two hours were done, Sammy's like, I'm not signing all these posters for you to sell on God knows where. We don't know what the fuck, where the fuck these. Wait, 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 wait. These photos were re-edited photos from our professional photographers where we pay good money like Mozart, Leon Dash and etc. They literally took those photos. He re-edited them. Some of them I looked cross-eyed and literally way worse than what another they girl. Her eyelashes were completely removed. <laughs> what? <laughs> like what? What the hell is it? That's <laughs> illegal. You are not allowed. That's copywritten co like photos and video work and you're stealing it and reselling it. And we never told you that you could resell it on a website later after that the yeah. event. No, that's just that's just taking advantage of us. And it sucks because there's a lot of men in this industry that try to fucking play us. But we've been in this industry for long enough to put our foots down when it's not right. Like we've been through this many times. So no, we're not gonna let you take advantage of us for the hundredth time. This is where we're we're not gonna stay quiet. We're gonna tell something. We're gonna if <laughs> it's funny because Sammy warned these motherfuckers. Oh yeah, they pulled me to the side, forgot to say this. They pulled me to the side in in the um hallway, away from the other girls, and we're like, We're not paying you, I'll give you half of what you want. And I said, what are you talking about? He's like, you didn't sign all, all of the um, posters and the kiss cards. And I said, I signed five each and that's good enough. And you shouldn't even be selling these on no fucking website because I did not give you fucking permission. Give me my two grand. And he was like, I will not. I said, you have two seconds to change your mind before you get the smoke. I said, do you want the smoke? I said it three times. I said, this is a warning. Do you want the smoke before I go in there and raise hell and everyone's going to flip the fuck out? And he said, nope, you're not getting paid. And you know what? Just keep all the merch. All the girls can keep your merch and none of you guys are getting paid now. That's when I lost it. Ooh. I came in. We recorded the whole fucking thing. So I will try to put some sneak peeks on here too of the yelling. Patty ripped up the posters of her own. It was wild. <laughs> Amber, Amber was... <laughs> fierce i've never seen amber in my life the way she got and i fucking love it if i ever get into a fight amber's on my side for sure yeah it comes out of me sometimes <laughs> but like also like when you fuck with people like i can't stand it like obviously you know he paid me first and i got paid oh by the way he, he tried to charge yeah but he tried to say oh i didn't do the photo shoot i didn't do it was agreed so i pulled up our text message where i said you know power shoot which we did uh the bikini shoot with the fans and uh i signed all the autographs i did it and he still charged me back and by the way this guy his instagram or his company's autograph city ny expo, expo. autograph city expo ny and glamour show star so if you see him on instagram models do not work with him obviously this is gonna happen to you all the testimonials we've got from other women along for the past two years he's been doing this trying to scam girls i can only imagine how much money he's made off of like vulnerable women yeah. and reselling their merchandise yeah, like that and it, it honestly sucks because we finally felt like we got to an agreement like i was like okay fine give me the two thousand dollars i don't want to be in this uncomfortable situation anymore we're leave and then he's like no well uh and then i said well i want to take the nude photos that i signed because i don't give you permission to sell these and he's like yeah go ahead take them i have this all on video so I put them in my bag. Then he walks over, goes into my bag, tries to take him out. He's like, this is my printed material. I paid for it. So I'm going to do whatever I want with it. I'm like, no, you're not. And he's like, okay, well, then I will shred them. I'm like, no, you're not. I'm going to shred them right here. And that's where I ripped that up. And that's where he got fucking pissed. So after we left the room, I'm about to go up to my room to decompress from this stressful situation. We were all yelling. Every, like we were trying to get what was deserved. Then he comes up, out in the hallway. Hey, Patty. By the way, I'm canceling your room right now. Mind you, I flew in from Miami and we're in buttfuck nowhere Unionville, Long Island. Like, where the hell am I supposed to go? Luckily, Sammy and Amber were coming back to PA, so I hitched a ride and I'd rather be with my girls to decompress after that traumatic incident. Like, the police came and everything. They called the cops to kick us out. It was so intense. Yeah, Marriott Unionville. Like, thank you so much for hosting this guy who scams people late right? and like, now he's supposed to have another event here june 3rd with a bunch of models hopefully they don't allow him to back you know because that's just embarrassing they were just kind of like oh we don't care uh the room wasn't paid for apparently even so like where were you gonna stay if he didn't pay for the room i don't <laughs> know the whole situation was very sketchy it's like he put us in a weird position he expected us to just do what he said 
you know, you just shoot around a bunch of photographers nude. I feel like it's it's disgusting, honestly. Like the fans were awesome. Don't get me wrong. I love like, the, fans the fans were amazing. Yeah, like you and know, the, the thing that sucks is like, yeah, like because of this dude, we don't feel comfortable doing events like this. And at the end of the day, the fans are missing out the most, and that's who we wanted to connect with. Like, fuck this dude. We want to connect with our fans, meet our fans. We thought this was going to be a safe place to do that, but unfortunately, there's so many fucking scammers in this industry. And this is not the first, honestly. There's different ways of scamming. Like I know we've talked about, I know Sammy has talked about like some of the management companies on Instagram are literally modern day pimps. I've been calling them modern day pimps from the very beginning. They're scamming you, doing using um, bots to infiltrate, uh, not infiltrate, inflate your numbers on Instagram, all of this. And all these girls are thinking they're getting like new engagement. Oh, we're doing new promo, but it's all bots literally ruining your page. The second you leave this management group and they stop giving you the likes, the followers, the comments, your page is gonna go to shit. And it's gonna be completely shadow banned because Instagram has software to detect likes and fake bots and all of that. And you're you're gonna leave a company after they ruined your your OnlyFans, your, all your social medias, you're gonna come out and be kind of stuck. And it's hard to kind of rebound from that and and it's very and it's very sad so fuck these modern day pimps yeah the other day i did um a collab post with another woman who's on this crazy agency the number one around i'm not going to say the name but it does start with a c um <laughs> we all hate them um they're scamming a bunch of people um so i did a collab post with one of their models and the post was not doing very well so it was like at eight thousand likes in like two hours, three hours maybe. And it should have been at like maybe 15,000 likes. Like, you know, we all know our pages. We know what the likes should be at. Especially if you're doing a collab post with another with model. With another model. It should be boosted a little bit more than what we regular. Yeah. So I refresh the page and randomly it pops up 38,000 likes. I was like, whoa, what the fuck is this? I said, this does not happen. It's stuck at the comments. So it still was stuck at the 200 comments with the 8,000 likes and then randomly 37, 38,000 likes doesn't make sense. So I was like, wow, okay. So now this collab post, it's affecting my main page now because I collabed with this fraud the girl's in a fraud, but she's under this fraud management. Of, but a lot of these girls, either they don't care because they want to look like they're popping, they have these or they followers, don't or they don't know. They really think that it's like real engagement. They're like, we're getting so much engagement. My OnlyFans is probably going to go up. And they realize it's not doing it's not. shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a lot of scams out there. It's honestly so upsetting. But number one, we just want to let everybody know not to work for this autograph. Yeah. New York Expo bullshit page. It's such a weird long name. We're going to put it down below for sure. Um, I don't really like the cancel culture thing. It's really scary back and forth, but this deserves, this deserves it. There's plenty of proof. There was a room full of girls, um, us three and two other females that saw everything go down. This is not a fake. This is a legitimate canceling situation. And, and we're all disputed. We all didn't get paid. He took back our, all our money on PayPal. So... <laughs> Now we have to fight PayPal for our money back. I drove four hours there and back. So eight hours total. It was, I'm pissed. <laughs> oh yeah, we're all fucking I just don't want any other models to go into the situation thinking, oh, like I'm going to get paid this much money and uh, this is what I have to do. And then you're in the situation. Now he's asking you to shoot in, like more than you're comfortable with. Uh, just asking you to sign more. Seems like he always does that. And then at the end of the day, like he doesn't want to pay you what you agreed upon. Um, obviously, it's like kind of heartbreaking feeling when you're in this situation. You're like, what do I do? So we just want to warn other models out there. Um, you know, just be careful. Do your due diligence. Um, stand up for yourself. If somebody is not doing you right, like say something. We we will we will help you honestly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Going off of what Amber just said, so I went, I was pissed after the whole situation. I started exposing him on my Instagram, on his stories, um, putting videos up. And because I did that, there was other models that were able to feel comfortable enough to come forward about his predatory behavior, his scamming behavior. Um, and I just want to say to the models listening to this podcast, do not be afraid to voice your experience no matter what it like if it's as bad or like whatever you think is not right do not keep quiet because when you keep quiet you don't help the other girls that are going to might be in that situation 
So that's why I decided to stand up and I gave the confidence to other females to come forward to me and be like, yes, he did this to me too. Yes, he's done this to me. And he's done even more to smaller girls who have 50,000 followers. He's trying to take, like he was, I can't prove it. Allegedly, he was printing uh, photos off of her OnlyFans page, nude photos, which you cannot do. You cannot do that. That's copyrighted material for her to sign. Imagine her showing up to signing thinking she's going to sign these cute glamour shots and there's her news off of her OnlyFans. I'd be mortified. Yeah. So a message to the girls, speak up. No matter how small your page is, no matter how you feel that you may not make a difference, one person might send that story to another person and it might just like, you know, expose the predators in this industry. And we need that. We need to stay together as a team, we need to watch each other's backs because at the end of the day, that's all we have is each other. Mm-hmm. And I feel like you, so I feel like you've grown a lot personally, Patty, because you just got out of the divorce maybe a year ago, maybe a little over a year. Yeah. And you were stuck with a narcissist who was ruining your life. Yeah. And I feel like you were more maybe n- like, no offense, like jaded maybe at the time he made you. Yeah. But I feel like you have a voice now and you've been really using it lately. You mm-hmm. you always tell girls to work on themselves, therapy, speak up. And you've on your stories been like doing this. So Yeah, I I because I I didn't I didn't have the confidence when I was in my marriage. He he literally I came into that relationship a bright shining star of lots of personality and over time, a narcissist drains you, sucks the living life out of you, and you just feel like you don't have a voice. Because every time you try to voice an opinion or a concern, they make it make you believe you're crazy and make you believe that, no, you're incorrect. And you create a lot of self-doubt in yourself. And when you're not, when you have a lot of self-doubt, your confidence is down, and then you're just like the shell of a person. So as soon as I realized when I got out of that relationship, put space between it, talk to my therapist, talk to other people. I realized this motherfucker was sucking the living life out of me, stealing all my fucking money. I left that marriage with zero in my bank account. I moved out with zero. So <laughs> I after I saw that injustice, I, I just can't keep quiet anymore. It's not fair. Like I've helped, I've even noticed through all my stories, through like my narcissistic posts, and even talking with females that have gone through the same thing, I've helped so many people understand like, hey, this is not right and this is not healthy. So and look at you now, you just bought your first house. Hey. Oh, yeah, I just signed on a new house last week. I'm so excited. Within a year of my divorce, pretty much, I was able to keep my head in the game, hustle and you know, work smarter, actually. Yeah. What advice could you give a woman maybe in the situation where she, you know, is with a narcissist trying to get out? So, um, believe it or not, it takes seven times to leave an abusive relationship. It is very, very, this is like proven, Google it. It is very hard to leave. Um, but keep trying. Do not lose yourself. Do not lose your self-respect on what you know you deserve. If a man puts his hands on you, you walk out the door. No man that loves you is going to put your put his hands on you. No man that loves you is going to make you feel like you are absolute shit. No man is that actually loves you is going to do that. And it starts with therapy, honestly, really like looking into like where your deficits are, where you need to put more boundaries and just keep your support system as well. Um, a lot of narcissists love to isolate. They love to try to like put little little seeds into your head like this friend's a bad friend this friend's a bad friend oh your parents are doing your dirty and they keep watering it making you believe that you know you shouldn't have this person in your life and at the end of the day you're going to be left with no one so make sure to keep your friends close and and even if you have a friend that's in an abusive relationship my best advice is don't go up being like, he's a piece of shit, fuck him, fuck him, he's a piece of shit. Because I've had friends saying, told, told me that during my relationship, but it was just so big and so loud that it became like disrespectful to me. Like the way that another friend of mine did it, she was there, she listened, she said, hey, Patty, like if that was me, I wouldn't take this. But I know you are in this situation and you just have to think what's best for you. Is it best for you to stay in the situation where someone's taking advantage of you, stealing from you, abusing you? Like you just got to gain more 
awareness instead of being in that little box with that narcissist. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. And like get your own bank account because I feel like narcissists, uh, they love that control. So they'll take away your financial, like Mm -hmm. maybe like say, oh, you don't need a job. I'll take care of you. And then, um, you know, now we shared bank accounts. Now you don't have your own account. Every money that all the money you get is split between you guys. Uh, It's another way of getting that control. So you won't leave or you can't feel like you can't leave. So I think like having your own bank account, stash your money away. Don't like when I was in a relationship, I had to stash my money away and not tell him how much I was making as a waitress uh, because, you know, we had a bank account and I was the only one putting money in. And then yep. when we split up, that mo- all that money was withdrawn from him. Yeah, same. So, <laughs> yeah, so like, um, thank goodness I, had, I did save a little bit, even though looking back now, it wasn't much, it still was enough to make me feel like, okay. And they make it look so exciting because like, yeah, maybe they'll put a little bit of money at the very beginning. And when you put the money together, you have like, let's say 300K in your bank account when you only had a hundred. It's like, wow, we have all this money now. Is this exciting? No, no, no. But look past it that's when everything starts getting blurred because both of your names are on it i even had my ex close our joint bank account together he took out the money and just closed it so i hadn't even no access i didn't even have a way to dispute that i needed that bank account for my divorce like it just there's just so many lines blurred that it's best to keep your money separate no matter how exciting it seems no matter how like they want to convince you whatever they're saying we have to be independent we should kind of look back at history how before women had rights and how these men would control us and this is kind of the same way that they're doing now is with taking away monies don't work stay here and when you're not working when you're not leaving the house you're not you don't really have that support system so do you do you feel that your trust is like gone or do you have trust issues now dating yeah yeah. Oh, because even even the dating, like I, when I first got into the dating scene, I was I wasn't as jaded. <laughs> and then I went into dating, and holy fuck, I hate it out there, especially in Miami. Oh my goodness, Patty's over here on Hinge, Tinder. She's like, Lux-y. I need to find love. I because I don't. It's hard when you're an influencer. You don't go to a nine to five. You don't interact with people all the time. You're at home doing your content. You're around other influencers. If you do work, it's hard to find like regular people to date. So, I mean, I recently cut off all of my narcissists out of my life. Thank fucking God. <laughs> and it's crazy the difference I noticed of when I finally purged my friend group, purged all the bad dudes. And I realized that the the brightness in me is starting to reignite. I'm starting to become more social. I'm starting to meet new people because I don't have those leeches sucking the living life out of me. Um, but... I'm, I am jaded. I, I don't even, at this point in my life, I was maybe a month or two ago, I was really trying to go on dates every week, but now I just, I don't feel like it. I'm so discouraged. Everyone's a fucking asshole out and there. And it seems like, um, you know, like at least when I was trying to date again, um, that I kind of had to hide my social media at first because then they would get the wrong impression mm-hmm. and they would come upstairs or I got you a room and it's like, dude, really I, i'm not looking for that i really just want like somebody who's going to be a friend to me and and be here for me and support me not just like your hookup because obviously they see our social media and they're like oh one thing like i'm gonna i want to get this girl yeah people think that we're so crazy in real life like we're having crazy wild sex parties or like we're like having slumber parties like pillow fights naked like we don't do any of that last night we came home we smoked a joint and was chilling watching music videos like we are just normal people guys like we are not crazy i do puzzles yeah i love puzzles. puzzles i'm a fucking puzzler <laughs> i love puzzling no it's so calming <laughs> We were talking yesterday on on this note. It's like these guys think that we're so absolutely like nuts and we're sluts and everything. But really, like while they're dating, would you rather date somebody who has an OnlyFans and you could trust and maybe they hooked up with one or two people? They do proper testing like Patty has to go through all these testings. You get proper tested from the guys you get tested. Or do you want to go out on a date every weekend and bang a random dude that you have no idea who he is, what he's all about, what he was doing the night before? And most dudes don't get tested because a lot of the dudes don't get symptoms from a lot of the STIs that are out there. They don't even know what the fuck they're having. I remember 
the first time I met one of Sammy's friends, I'm not going to name his name. This was like a couple of years ago, but he was literally out there being like, yeah, I fuck bitches all the time. I never get tested. I probably have a whole cocktail in my fucking spur. I just give it everywhere. Then I not. And I was looking at him. I'm like, who the fuck are you? And I feel bad for those girls getting whatever the fuck you're giving them. Does it sound like the A? Yeah. <laughs> if you don't treat gonorrhea, it can cause heart problems. You could die from it. Yeah. And a lot of these dudes don't get tested. Yeah. And for females, it's different when, when, cause we're, our um, sexual organs are internal and it's nice and warm and moist. I know it might be a little bit disgusting to talk about it, but that's perfect breeding grounds for bacteria in the STIs. So that's why for us females, we feel it a lot quicker. And that's why we go get tested. And it's funny, like we go to the gynecologist when something's wrong. Where do guys go? Do guys even go to the penis doctor to get checked? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it has to get pretty bad for them to go. Yeah. Like, can we even really get them to go to the dentist? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah, these guys, like, I just don't get it. Like, these guys will go out to the bar, bring random chicks home, but then make fun of OnlyFans girls saying we're sluts and everything and they could never date us. <laughs> when really the nurse down the street is way more uh, of a hoe than us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's funny, um, I might out myself here, but I'm an open book. I've We've all had our, had our scares with STDs and every time I've had an STD, it was never from anyone in the industry. It was always like the random hookup or like the dude that I was like my friends with benefits who wasn't in the industry, who was fucking random girls all over the fucking cities when it came out that I had something, which is fucking disgusting. So at the end of the day, I prefer with working with male talent because I know that I asked for a test within a week. He sends me one with a uh, QR code to make sure they can't Photoshop it to legit show what the real test is. So yeah. crazy. I've never had an STD, but I used to get ST like infections all the time or UTIs. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was me. Like the, the man I was with made me feel like it was my my yeah. fault. But now looking back, I have probably haven't had one in like three or four years because like, it was just him. Like probably he wasn't didn't. cleaning his dick, he bro. Wasn't cleaning his dick. <laughs> yeah. Especially like uncircumcised dicks. Like you gotta <laughs> do double cleaning. Like you clean the outside, then you like scrub you know pull down the skin and you gotta clean inside it's a little like you do the cleaning my high school boyfriend he was uncircumcised and i started getting chronic yeast infections because of him chronic and then i thought it was me too but then i was like yo you need to start like washing your dick better and then he's like i'm gonna really try to wash my dick and then boom (laughs) No more yeast infections. I'm, I'm a lie. Like, it was crazy. <laughs> also, like, with the hands, like, this is something I'm really weird about in med. Like, you have to prove to me that you've washed your, wash your hands before fingering like, or wash, anything. Don't wash your hands. I don't want no Dorito fingers. Ew. Or, like, you, t- you know, you under t- the nails, too. There's so much bacteria. Like, ugh, my ex used to bite his fingernails and use his, like, nail to, like, clean his teeth. I'm like, you know how much bacteria you're putting back into your fucking teeth? Throw up. It was disgusting. I would yell at him. I, he did all this disgusting shit, man. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so on that note, yeah, let's get away from the nasty ass. Yeah. I want to know what your most sold piece of content is on OnlyFans. My what did the fans, fans love? Oh, okay, gang, gang. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I was married, me and my ex were swingers. Um, we were doing many different parties, uh, orgies, gang bangs. Uh, four sums, three sums, whatever we, whatever people wanted to come, they came, and that's pretty much my most selling content. Because at the time when I was doing that content on OnlyFans, no one else was doing it, and it was in an amateur setting, so it wasn't like with a bunch of different photographers taking all these angles. Everything was real, and that's what the fans like. They don't like the highly edited, the highly scripted fake shit. They want to see you get down and loving it, no matter what the situation is, as long as you're having a good time, no matter what people are there. I even saw a recent thread on on Twitter. Some girls like, do you guys like girls that are more like my type or like more thicker, more skinnier? Like, what do you guys want to see me with? They all said, we don't give a fuck who you perform with as long as we, we can see on your face that you're enjoying it. And that's the number one thing with like, that's the number one advice I would give to all OnlyFans creators. Make content that you enjoy because the fans will see it on your face when you're not enjoying it, when you're faking it or doing it because you have to. Yeah. 
I, um, Patty, on that note, she asked me, we were saying we need more money. So we've all been in this like the past four months, almost everyone in the industry has been having a hard time making even more money. I feel like we're all like pretty stagnant. The world, we don't know where it's going. People don't want to spend as much money as they used to. So me and Patty were like, we need to do a collab video. So Patty is more full send and I'm not. So I'm sitting in bed with my boyfriend on speakerphone and we're trying to come up with something like Patty goes, girl, you come to Miami next week. Let me eat you out. Let's let's do a video of me eating you out. Let me eat you out. It would make so much good money. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, drop my phone. My boyfriend's like, what? And I was like, love you, Patty, but I don't think I could do that. I would laugh the, the whole time. I don't even know. Yeah. So yeah, do something that you love. Like I love getting eaten out by a male, but. I don't know if I would let Patty. Yeah, that. she'd probably just start laughing at me. Like, bitch, you're not doing it right. But actually, <laughs> no, listen, I, I'm very good at what I do. No, so, I'm sure you are. <laughs> I've seen girls fake it before, like where they just like put their legs up and they're just like, <sighs> oh yeah, girls. So they fake it all the time. I can't do it. It's against my morals to fake that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you no. can't fake orgasm. No, and my orgasm is really big. So, so to fake that, it, it's hard. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I have like this, uh, I call it the, the, what's it called? The uh, tremble technique is what I call. Ooh. So when I come, my it. whole body trembles. Let's hear it. <laughs> it's, it's like, <laughs> I've seen it. She looks like she's having a seizure. Hold on. <laughs> I seize on that dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild. <laughs> that to me. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So that's, that's what I do. Oh my God. <laughs> um on a note of models and there's lots of controversy around this so lately there's been this overload of plus size models and people in general really who are overweight um and we can't even really use even the word obese anymore because they say that it's like attacking them we're not allowed to use that word but what do you think of this whole trend of the plus size models and why don't we see that more in the men it's always more on the female side of the plus size models um because we use models to advertise a lot like female models were the ones that are used to sell a lot of products um that's why i think we're talking more about the females and i feel like there's nothing good about being obese uh, i mean there's it sucks being overweight there's some health problems that does cause weight gain like thyroidism and some other different stuff but it doesn't mean that it should be accepted and it doesn't mean it's healthy. And I've been seeing TikTok videos and stuff of people who are obese starting to demand free stuff because of it. Like one girl's like, I should be able to take up two seats for free on an airplane because I can't fit in one. Which at the end of the day, it's really saddening that unfortunately you feel uncomfortable in these seats, but you have to look at your diet. What are you eating? What are, what, what are you exercising? Being obese at the end of the day, no matter how much the society and media and people who are obese are trying to normalize it, it shouldn't be normalized because it's not healthy. Just like doing drugs isn't healthy. Just like drinking too much isn't healthy. Eating too much is not healthy, especially the foods that do um do give you the most weight gain processed foods fast foods and it's it's a very sad topic but it is an addiction for sure it yeah. is an addiction. i feel like in america we pr kind of promote that like you know all we did all we can do here is like <laughs> eat and i feel like you look at your average person like just an average person and they are overweight i mean er the whole cut the whole world knows it. Like Americans are overweight. So with the plus size models, they started bringing them in because they're trying to target those, that audience. Yeah. So like nowadays you can't have skinny models because their target audience are all. But too skinny winning. is unhealthy as well, to be honest. Right. Um, I just want to list out a couple of things on, because people are going to be like, oh, you guys are hating on the obese, the fat, but. And me, I, I want to say I have hypothyroidism, so I struggle with my weight and I am a little thicker. I am, but I'm not out there like I am a model and you need to accept me. And I and I am like I, I'm very self-conscious about my body right now, actually. And but I'm not going to demand anything or demand certain attention or demand a trophy for being like a fucking model or anything. Everybody wants a trophy. Everybody wants attention nowadays. And that's what this is all about. It's like 
it's so weird and we have the girls like lizzo who people look up to and she, they're saying like it's beautiful and uh, oh on tiktok how she just takes her stomach and like goes like this with it and it's ah it's like waves of the ocean it's fucking scary so it's not that healthy <laughs> Just so we can put it out there, what are some health risks of overweight and obesity? Type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, sleep apnea, metabol meta metabolic syndrome, fatty liver diseases, osteoarthritis, gallbladder diseases, and it, the list goes on. Why would you want to be exposed to all of these health risks? And going back to what Amber said about how Americans are very obese, we there's foods that we sell in america and, and a lot of people really enjoy that are banned all over the fucking world in europe and japan they won't even import some of these snacks like twinkies red twinkies, dyes yeah. red dyes um i also saw a video on tiktok of a um, canadian who um brought back ketchup from canada to the u.s when you look and it's heinz ketchup the same company the american version you see the list of ingredients like this long, like added, 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 added bullshit. When you go to look at the ketchup bottle from Canada, it has tomatoes, vinegar, and like two other ingredients to make that fucking ketchup. So it's kind of wild how <laughs> this country that we live in is like trying to promote these diseases. You know why? Because we're formulated. No, because of big pharma. They yeah. make money on all of those medications. I have a friend of mine who he's not he's not too overweight, but he when I started talking to him, he's like, Yeah, I have twenty seven different medications I'm on right now. Who the fuck should be on twenty seven different medications? But you know what happens is you take one medication that's produced by big pharma that causes three other symptoms where you have to take medication for those three other symptoms and then boom 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 you're taking 27 different medications which is fucking insane yeah if you look back in the 1960s everyone was skinny there was no overweight person on the beach mm -hmm. when you look at these old photos so we have to look at that like what is the issue we need to stop making this like that it's okay we need to work on this issue it's a big issue in the u.s and i feel like we look we overlook it we're not look we're not taking care of these people but on the other hand they're, they'll help people who have like heroin addiction give them free narcan on the streets and everything but we need to focus more on the health education system and not give away free medication that such like that we need to focus on this obesity that's like i think it was the leading cause of death maybe a year or two ago i'm not sure what the leading cause is now but so one thing that's causing this to happen and I think obesity kind of is more prominent with the lower income families because they can't afford the healthier foods in this country. Our it is so like $30. it is so expensive to get fruits and vegetables as opposed to going to McDonald's and getting a fucking meal for seven dollars that could feed like could feed you for the day. You know what I mean? And that's the stuff that's causing obesity. So. And some some companies or, or restaurants, but what's that stuff? MSG, yeah, yeah. MSG, uh, which is like a chemical that fills you up and makes you bloated, to like a filler, right? Yeah. Is what it is. And ground beef, like they're saying that it's just like the worst parts of the cow, and they just make this goo. It's just <laughs> like I know it's just so sad. Like I go to the I go to the grocery store and I look at all the ingredients and I can't even find like a decent meal mm -hmm. that even vegetables, they're sprayed with pesticides. Um, if you eat, if I eat bread, I had to stop eating bread because I blow it up and I get really, I, I don't feel good, but I'll go to another country. Like Italy where it's full of carbs, pasta, breads, pizzas. And I feel, I feel fine. People lose weight there. <laughs> yeah, no. Eating all this amazing food, they lose weight in Europe. And I eat a bite of a freaking There's no toast. gluten allergies in, in There's Europe. no allergies like anywhere. Like when I say I have a peanut allergy, that doesn't exist over in other no. countries. They're like, what? Yeah. And why does it happen so much in America? I don't know. These are questions that we all need to ask, that we all need to literally be conscious of because we want to live a happy, long life. Like, I want to be here and making an impact on this world as long as I can. So I got to look at every fucking ingredient that I put in my body now. Yeah. Closing this up because I know you have to fly out in an hour. She has to leave us. 
But on that note, what is your maybe five to- five or 10 year long-term goal? Uh, are you going to be doing OnlyFans this whole time? What do you want to do with your voice and everything? So um, right now I'm working on my real estate license. Um, and I, I feel like a lot of maybe OnlyFans models may turn to real estate. And I kind of want to do after I've done my broker's license to start up um, a firm with retired OnlyFans models or even if they're still doing OnlyFans to join all together because yeah sure only yeah. homes only homes oh Ooh, I love that <laughs> so I mean like yes we do do sex work we do OnlyFans and it's like oh yeah we do all this but through that we've made so many connections we've done so much networking we know so many people and also a lot of these models are investing in properties so it's a perfect little conjunction there and then I also in my new house that I just bought there's a podcast room already built out for me and I'm actually going to start my own podcast talking about um health um mental health modeling what's going on in society and the big thing I want to do is bring on in professionals that know what they're talking about so like therapists nutritionists like I want to get really good information out there so people can be continue learning and continue to thrive i like it we're here for it (laughs) well thank you patty for coming and thank you amber we're gonna have amber solo for next week so don't you worry she she's gonna be in the spotlight next time but um patty k thank you please follow both of them we have lots of content together and please do not support autograph city expo Mm -mm. bullshit girls do not do it Love you guys, and we'll see you guys next week. Yeah, bye, Moss.